Hello everyone. My name is Xinbin Wang, a professor at Western University of Canada. In this presentation, I will talk about the enabling technologies and emerging research opportunities for the fifth generation of wireless networks, 5G. The focus of this presentation is to analyze the technical challenges of 5G identify the corresponding key enabling technologies and share some insight on the emerging research opportunities. The outline of the presentation is as follows. First, I will briefly introduce myself and the research activities in my group. In the second section, a technical analysis of 5G will be presented to identify the technical requirement, main challenges, and key enabling technologies of 5G. Emerging research opportunities related to 5G will be presented in the third section, which include channel modeling in millimeter wave band, 5G air interface design, 5G headnet, and RT applications enabled by 5G. Now let's start with section 1. Regarding myself, uh, I'm a professor and Canada Research Chair at Western University of Canada. My current research interest covers wireless system network adaptation so that we can improve the efficiency, reliability, and the security of wireless communications. Our 5G-related research acti activities are focused on NOMA, massive MIMO, so that we can fully utilize the three-dimensional distributed radio resources in frequency, time, and space domains. And we also work on the cost-effective operations of 5G headnet through user and network corporations. Our research activities also covers the wireless IoT security and location technologies so that we can improve the situation awareness for the ICT service delivery. My group at Western has a focus on technology innovation and prototype development. Currently, we have developed 26 granted and pending patents. We have also developed many successful collaboration partnerships with the industry for technology transfer. Now let's move on to the second section of the presentation, technical analysis of 5G. We'll start with an uh, overview of the evolution of uh, mobile communication technologies. And uh, during the last around 40 years, we have witnessed explosive growth of wireless industry and a dramatic evolution of wireless communication technologies from the first generation to the fourth generation. And we can see some of the representative user equipment uh, for 1G to 4G shown on this slide including the uh, analog Motorola uh, Dynatech uh, analog phone uh, for the first generation. And uh, each generation of the mobile communication technologies features main advantage and weaknesses. The first generation of the uh, mobile communication technology support mobility and which is a key uh, technology differentiator when we compare it with the existing wireline communications. However, it has a major uh, weaknesses, uh, including uh, very low spectrum efficiency, uh, higher security risk due to the use of the analog communication technology uh, in the uh, first generation. The main advantage of the second generation is the digital communication techniques and which lead to the improved security uh, QS support. However, you know, the system bandwidth is very limited. 
from 3G, 3 and a half G and 4G, uh, communication bandwidth has been increased and consequently more applications uh, can be supported including the uh, wireless internet access, online gaming, and social networking. As we can see from 1G to 4G, one of the main design objectives for the mobile communications is to increase the communication bandwidth or capacity so that we can in increase uh, the uh, number of the applications we can support. As now we are entering the 5G era, the fundamental question for us is that will we continue this trend for 5G or do we expect anything else from 5G? And is 5G evolutional or revolutional? To answer this question, let's take a look at what are the fundamental driving forces for 5G. So in this figure, which shows the data traffic growth projection from Cisco, uh, which is made in year 2014. And an annual growth rate of 61% is expected, in indicating a significant increase in data traffic has to be supported by 5G. And this trend reflects the reality of increased smart devices and growing video traffic over mobile uh, networks. On the other hand, the growing unconventional use of wireless devices and infrastructure for machine-to-machine -machine communications and Internet of Things has become the main driving force for the current intensive research and standardization activities on the 5G uh, networks. As shown in the plot on this slide, a annual growth rate of 21% is predicted for machine-to-machine -machine communications in the next few years. And we can see from all this market analysis that 5G is not just simple increasing of data rate. And with ongoing integration of ICT technologies with conventional industries, one key aspect of 5G is to support machine-centric communications. Now, as an umbrella technology, 5G will be expected to unify people and machine communications. And we expect 5G will enable highly efficient, ultra-reliable, dependable, secure, privacy-preserving, and delay-critical services to everyone and everything. And to put everything under perspective, and we're expecting the draft 5G standard to be released at around 2020, which leaves an extremely tight schedule for the 5G-related research and development. We will introduce some background on 5G. Now let's discuss the technical requirement and the main challenges so that we are able to identify the key enabling technologies for 5G. This slide shows the technical design objectives for different generations of wireless communication technologies. As we mentioned earlier, increasing data rate was the main design objectives for first generation to the fourth generation. Now the question for us is that if this trend will continue for the fifth generation. To answer this question, let's recall the main driving forces of 5G that include both people and machine-centric communications. And to support machine-related communications, we are facing a completely different set of design objectives on latency, reliability, flexibility, and capacity. The challenge of 5G is that, you know, we have to meet 
the multiple objectives at the same times, that including the significantly increased system capacity and significantly increased device density and extremely short latency and very high mobility. Now these design objectives of 5G are reflected by these numbers listed on these slides. When we meet these numbers, 5G will be able to support ultra-fast, ultra-reliable, and extremely dense machine-to-machine -machine communications. To achieve 5G requirement, a number of technical challenges has to be overcome, which include how to support the significantly increased network capacity with very limited radio spectrum, how to use the extremely higher RF frequencies with very poor signal processing capability, and how to deal with the complex interference scenario due to the network identification and the existence of heterogeneous network, how to meet the dynamic requirement from people-centric to machine to ma machine-to-machine -machine communications. And we also have to deal with the uh, how to manage the heterogeneous network uh, in an efficient way with interoperability and backward, backward compatibility. To overcome the 5G technical challenges, a number of enabling technologies for 5G are needed. On these slides, we summarize the 5G enabling technologies, which include the spectrum and energy efficient communications, distributed three-dimensional communications in frequency, time, and space domains, 5G headnet operations and management, service-oriented OTOE communications. Now in meeting the 1,000 times of increase of system capacity in 5G, we could try three directions during uh, our design for 5G systems and networks. On the horizontal direction, we can use spectrum extension to secure more radio resources for 5G communications. For instance, we can use millimeter waveband to secure more bandwidth for 5G communications. On the vertical direction, we can use advanced antenna technologies, including Massive MIMO and the distributed antenna system, to increase the spectrum efficiency, and particularly in the space, space domain, by using the uh, beamforming technologies. And we can also explore the network identification to increase the system capacity by reducing the cell size in 5G networks, such that with, within each cell, uh, there are reduced number of the users to be served, so that each user will have increased share of radio resources for 5G communications. Now, to improve the spectral efficiency in 5G, we can use massive MIMO distributed antenna system non orthogonal user multiplexing, including NORMA and SCMA, and flexible spectrum utilization to improve the spectrum efficiencies in 5G. Now, the massive multi input multiple output system is based on the large scale antenna array and the system design based on the random metric theory. The advantage of Massive MIMO is the <coughs> spatial multiple access and also the dramatically increased spectral and energy efficiencies. However, the challenge of Massive MIMO is the dramatically increased system complexity and cost due to the requirement of multiple RF chains uh, in the Massive MIMO system. And the channel estimation procedure could be much longer and also could be complicated by the pilot 
contamination. On this slide, we have a simple model for the massive MIMO system. And uh, due to the time, I will not uh, uh, go through the mathematics. As we can see, uh, with the increased antenna element, the system performance of massive MIMO in terms of uh, beta error rate is dramatically reduced. And the impact of uh, noise and the channel is significantly reduced as well. Now another area to increase the uh, system uh, efficiency is through the uh, non-orthogonal user multiplexing. Uh, multiplexing. So we have NOMA. The basic principle behind NOMA is that we allow non-orthogonal use of uh, radio resources in 5G. And as a comparison, in the early generations of wireless communications, radio resources are allocated to different users in an orthogonal way, means that uh, the radio resources are not overlapped uh, in both frequency and time domain. Now, by allowing the non-orthogonal uh, allocation of the radio resources to different users, we increase the system uh, efficiency. However, uh, the multiple users now have a mutual impact, and which has to be eliminated using the successive interference cancellation. And uh, the uh, normal system can be even further combined with massive MIMO so that we can achieve further increased system efficiency. Now the challenges of uh, normal system is the increased system complexity due to the uh, interference cancellation process and also the real-time user clustering and power allocation among users. In the area of dynamic spectrum utilization, we can explore the shared use of license band, coordinated use of unlicensed band, spectrum aggregation, so that you know all the fragmented uh, allocation uh, of the uh, narrow band can be uh, aggregated into a much wider band in supporting the 5G communications. Now another aspect for 5G is that we will have a multi-tier, multi-cell, and multi-connectivity uh, network architecture. And in supporting the efficient operations of this kind of complex network, the cooperation among cells, networks, and users would be essential. With a significantly increased number of base stations and access points, 5G infrastructure will be highly complex and expensive. Cost-effective network deployment and management techniques will be the key in addressing the widening revenue traffic gap. In supporting the ongoing ICT convergence, machine-to-machine -machine communications, latency reduction techniques, secure and reliable communications are also among the key enabling technologies for 5G. Now with the uh, technical challenges, requirements, and enabling technologies identified in the previous section, now we are able to uh, discuss some of the emerging 5G research topics in section 3. So here uh, is a list of uh, emerging research topics in 5G, which include the spectrum extension and channel modeling in millimeter wave band, 5G waveform and air interface design, spectrum traffic and operation management in 5G headnet, security, situation awareness, and IoT applications enabled by 5G. 
Now let's talk about the spectrum extension and channel modeling. To meet the 1,000 times of dramatic increase of uh, network capacity, the current spectrum scarcity and carbonates will become even worse. And as a result, we have to find new spectrums in achieving the expected network capacity. New spectrum below 6 GHz and above 6 GHz will be secured for 5G communications. And in addition, we also look into the millimeter wave band to secure more uh, available radio resources for 5G communications. However, the key challenge of using millimeter wave band is to mitigate its signal propagation characteristics by using appropriate physical layer and access network design. The main challenge of using millimeter wave band is due to the extremely higher path loss from non-line site signal propagation, which is common in indoor communications. And in addition, the atmosphere attenuation could be very high for some of the frequencies due to air absorption. And this band uh, has to be avoided for 5G communications. The line of sight and non line of sight uh, <coughs> pass loss can be modeled uh, by these two uh, empirical equations from Metis. Metis in 2014, and this give us a guideline in understanding the uh, uh, both line of sight and non line of sight pass loss for 5G communications in millimeter wave band. However, uh, we still need to understand both the delay spread and the power delay profile, uh, which is a two important factors for 5G air interface design. And due to the extremely wide bandwidth and short symbol durations of 5G communications, uh, the understanding of uh, power delay profile and delay spread of the uh, millimeter wave band channel uh, will give us uh, the uh, insight uh, on the coherent chan uh, channel bandwidth and uh, inter symbol interference uh, when we design the 5G air interface. So this plus on uh, uh, this slide uh, shows some of the sample measurement results uh, on the power delay profile and also the delay spread. And this is from uh, METIS in year 2014. So now we will discuss the, uh, some of the research topics related to the air interface and waveform design in 5G. Now, related to the 5G air interface design, some of the possible research topics include massive MIMO and distributed antenna system, advanced OFDM, NOMA, SCMA, and for duplex. Now, both massive MIMO and uh, distributed antenna system relies on the advanced antenna technologies. And uh, for these two uh, systems, channel estimation, parallel design, and parallel contamination uh, could be explored due to the fact that uh, you know, multiple concurrent uh, sub-channels are always uh, involved in supporting this kind of uh, spatial transmission techniques. And uh, we can uh, study the uplink-downlink design and TDD protocol design. Now for the distributed antenna system, low latency signaling is also needed to support the uh, dynamic coordination among the distributed uh, uh, antenna systems. For both systems, hardware complexity uh, could be a uh, new way to reducing the hardware complexity uh, could be explored. 
and some of the uh, operation related procedures can be studied as well. Another major area in the uh, 5G air, in air interface is uh, advanced OFDM systems. Advanced OFDM system is useful uh, due to the fact that uh, it uh, can provide a flexible and efficient way of utilizing the uh, fragmented RF resources. And due to the current spectrum uh, allocation, the channel conditions at different subband could be very uh, different. And the current allocation could also lead to the fragmented use of uh, spectrum resources. So the uh, advanced OFDM system gives us a better control of uh, the uh, utilization of the radio resources in both time and frequency domain. Several advanced OFDM systems have been developed in my research group, including the Procoded Cyclic Prefix, the PCP OFDM system. In this system, a signal link is created at the physical layer by encoding the system controlling and link adaptation information into the PCP. This PCP signal link is very useful in supporting dynamic communications due to the fast variation of the user requirement and channel conditions. The generation of the pre-coded cycle prefix involves the generation of the Kasami sequences using the system adaptation information or controlling information. The replacement of the conventional cyclic prefix with the proposed uh, precoded cyclic prefix will destroy the cyclic nature of the traditional OFDM signal. As a result, interblock interference will be introduced between the uh, PCP and the data current OFDM symbols when we have strong multipass effect. To mitigate such negative impact, a successive demodulation and interference reconstruction and cancellation has been introduced at the PCP OFDM receiver site. To achieve the desired robustness of the PCP signaling, the uh, detection error rate analysis could be used to guide the design of the PCP OFDM systems. We also developed a multi-layered OFDM system. And as the name indicates that uh, in this system, we have the base layer uh, of the uh, traditional OFDM system superimposed with enhanced layers, which has carries the signaling to support the interaction among neighboring uh, base stations. And this system is useful to support the coordinated multipoint transmission. The multi-layered OFDM system has been adopted into the new ATSC standard, ATSC 3.0, earlier this year. And this slide shows the uh, transceiver structure for multi-layered OFDM system. In designing the multi-layered OFDM system, both system design objective and constraints has to be taken into consideration. Another multi-symbol encapsulated OFDM system MSE OFDM system is also uh, developed in my group to support short burst communications. For example, the machine-to-machine uh, -machine communications from 5G enabled uh, applications. This system involves using one prefix, which is a pseudo-random sequence to protect multiple OFDM symbols. And we could 
include different numbers of the OFDM symbols in one MSE OFDM frame. In addition to advanced OFDM systems, NOMA is another very important area for the 5G air interface design. NOMA involves the non-orthogonal use of the communication resources, which could increase the system capacity, but introduce interference among coexisting users. And such interference has to be canceled for the successful uh, demodulation at all users. Particular research problem for NOMA include the design of sparse code, such that non-orthogonality among co-current users can be maximized, while the interference among these users uh, is uh, uh, in a controlled manner and uh, the interference cancellation is converged. With the varying channel condition among the distributed users, NOMA users has to be paired or grouped by considering their dynamic channel gain difference. And the relative gain difference among the NOMA users in the same group is very important for the uh, interference cancellation. In addition, the channel conditions could be very different at a different part of the 5G band. Therefore, we have another area on the user scheduling to explore by assigning different user pairs into suitable subbands. When we combine massive MIMO and normal technologies together, we could face another research problem of antenna selection, and particularly when we have a massive MIMO system with a limited RF chance. This slide shows the uh, system modeling of a single band two user MIMO normal system, and details our proposed antenna selection and user scheduling in massive MIMO NOMA system can be found in the reference shown on the bottom of these slides. One more area of NOMA re related research is the interference cancellation. Both successive interference cancellation and parallel interference cancellation can be used in mitigating the multi-user interference in NOMA system. However, the trade-off between the system performance and imp implementation complexity is an interesting area for further investi investigation. As mentioned earlier, cost-effective operations and management of 5G infrastructure is very important. In this subsection, we'll present some of the emerging research topics on coordinated spectrum, traffic, and security management in 5G headnet. As we know, 5G infrastructure will be highly heterogeneous with extremely high complexity. Consequently, we have to overcome a number of the challenges in effectively operating 5G headnet, including the uh, complexity reduction and latency reduction in the uh, handovers in 5G headnet, efficient resource management, and power consumption reduction. One important research direction in this area is to use Software Defined Networking, SDN, for 5G headnet management. 
the use of SDN in 5G headnet will bring a number of advantages, including the centralized controlling capability, global management of 5G infrastructure, network function virtualization, and capital operational cost reduction. For example, uh, SDN can be used to achieve data offloading from cellular network to Wi-Fi and load balancing in 5G headnet. By using SDN, we can reduce the cellular network usage by leveraging available Wi-Fi connectivity without affecting overall application performance. In our research, SDN has also been used to accelerate the authentication handover in 5G headnet by sharing the security context information among relevant base stations and access point. And this process is enabled by the software defined networking. And as a result, the handover authentication latencies in the 5G handnet are dramatically reduced. In addition, SDN has been proposed to improve the spectrum utilization rate and management of the available spectrum in 5G handnet through a harmonized SDN-enabled approach, HSA. Our SDN-enabled synergistic spectrum sharing technique relies on both distributed input reporting on spectrum availabilities by the base stations and access point, as well as the global management capability of the SDN in the 5G headnet. The proposed task sharing scheme between the base stations and the SDN controller harmonize the network operation and also achieve the performance and complexity trade-off in 5G headnet. In the last subsection on emerging research topics, I will briefly discuss the situation awareness and IoT applications enabled by 5G. Given the complexity of 5G infrastructure and services, situation awareness is a key to develop cost-effective solutions enabled by 5G. In general, situation awareness includes a wide variety of uh, environmental-related factors, such as who, what, when, and where associated with a particular event. Here, we will be focused on location awareness. Location awareness is the capability of a user or device to determine its own location, and which is a key for intelligent and customized ICT service provisioning in 5G. Wireless locationing can be achieved by first measuring some location-dependent signal propagation par parameters and attributes between the target device and a, a number of location reference nodes. So this signal propagation parameters and attributes include time arrival, radio signal strength, and angle of arrival. And then we can determine the location of the target device by using multiple such measurement between the targeted device and several reference nodes. Most location-based services are indoor applications where the GPS signal is not always available. As a result, using 5G-based locationing becomes very useful for IoT and location-based applications. 
However, we have to overcome a number of challenges for 5G indoor location. And first of all, we have to mitigate the impact of the complex signal propagation environment from the indoor applications. And secondly, we have to manage the wireless reference node with a different reliability and mobility. We have developed an integrated wireless system for indoor location, tracking, and communications. And in this multifunctional system, signal processing techniques has been developed in removing the impact of the multipass when the line of sight pass is blocked, the signal strength of the direct signal propagation pass is extremely low. And in addition, the collaborative communication capability within the network has been exploited to improve the location accuracy and reduce the overall deployment and location complexity. With the combination of 5G and IoT, we expect that every aspect of our lives and the connected society will be affected, from smart homes and connected cars to smart buildings and intelligent transportation systems. One example is the application of 5G in smart grid networks where the 5G handnet can be used for dynamic data collection, real-time analysis, and controlling of both conventional and renewable power generating facilities, as well as heavy power consumption equipment, such as electric vehicles. Another example is the 5G-enabled vehicle area network. The anticipated self-driving vehicles would shoulder the burden of the driving and set the driver on board free. And consequently, the supporting of growing in-vehicle data traffic will be extremely challenging in future 5G and vehicle area networks. And this is due to the high mob mobility of the vehicles and the densified irregular distributions of on-road traffic especially during the rush hours. Now, let me briefly summarize the presentation. In this presentation, we have discussed the technical requirement, challenges, key enabling technologies, and emerging research topics for 5G. And some of the conclusion include Spectrum and energy efficiencies are the most important performance indicators of 5G air interface design. Massive MIMO and distributed antenna systems are the key enabling technologies in achieving the spatial spectrum efficiency. Advanced OFDM techniques will be essential in achieving flexible and efficient transmission in frequency and time domain. NOMA provide additional freedom in exploring resources not orthogonally. Traffic spectrum interference and security management can be enhanced through advanced networking technologies like SDN. Situation and location awareness are critical to enhance the 5G service provisioning. And in this presentation, we have identified abundant research problems on 5G and IoT app related applications. These research topics, the expected product and services to be enabled by 5G, the ongoing ICT convergence, and the integration of IoT and 5G, may fundamentally transform our lives and unleash enormous economic potential. I have listed some of the references related to this presentation.
including a number of publications from my research group. Thank you for your time. If you have any questions related to this presentation, feel free to drop me a line. I wish you all the best in your 5G related research. Bye for now.